real quickly. I've got about, uh, I don't know, a few more minutes on my battery. Um, so I'll do one more video. This is something I just come across not long ago, just stumbled upon. And I've been working a lot more in box three of the major, major pentatonic scale. <laughs> That's the key of, of G, and most of the time I do that, it's usually in like way up here in the, in the bluesy uh, half of that, which that is basically one, two, three frets up. It's like the famous Tony Rice lick, but it doesn't really work the same. So I want to do it here, and that's going to be between the uh, seventh and fifth fret. First of all, let me show you the actual. Um, shape so uh, seven five b string is eight five and we have seven four and that's a pinky stretch on both of those and then we got the ring finger again seven five seven five seven five on the less remaining ones so the actual shape we're going to come slide up to that seventh fret do a little pull off from the six to five okay and then that's our G string, that's our, our e, B string, but that's our G root note. You can either do that or do a trill. And then you can do the same thing. We're going to do the same uh, pull off from the six to the five. And then this time come down with our ring finger. You can technically do it with your pinky so you can come back, but it feels better with your ring finger. come back and do the note before that other note on the fourth fret so so far we got so we're doing the note that comes before each note each uh, each note with the first finger and then I'm just going to do a pinky half step up from that seven to the eight then open G that was an open G string tra string transition that will get us up here Or if you want to continue that, same shape, uh, seven, eight, five, seven, eight, one, eight, same shape on the bottom strip. go to that open G. That would be something good to tag out a song maybe. I don't know. Maybe you can use that as something. If you do, post a link to the video and uh, I'll be sure to try my best to watch it because I'd like to get some ideas on how to use that lick. Not exactly sure. You want that last G to be a downstroke. Walk it up too. Uh, all right, so definitely, guys, uh, hope you can do something with that. And uh, if you do, like I said, let me a link below and uh, let me see what I give me some ideas. So uh, I'm trying to figure out what to do with that. So appreciate you guys watching. This is a very short video which I'm gonna to try to do a lot more of. That just seems like I can get more out there and I won't be rambling forever today. If you'd like to hear more about, I mentioned open string transitions. If you'd like to hear more about how those incorporate into your playing and how, I mean, tremendously valuable they are to bluegrass playing, check out bluegrassguitarcentrals.com and you can find information about the webisodes and the DVDs from there. So for example, here's another open string transition that I uh, kind of start with, I think I use this, if I'm not mistaken, I use this in my course. Mm -hmm. 
And those little string transitions allow me to move back and forth if I need to. That may be the one I use. I know I'll use that one for sure, but that was another one. That's a very cascading effect. Uh, but definitely check out uh, Bluegrass Guitar Essentials for more ideas and concepts on open string transitions. They are definitely essential, I think, in learning to play bluegrass. Uh, and they're not very talked about a whole lot. They're not talked about a whole lot. Uh, Tony Rice kind of first turned me on to the idea of those. So I see my time is up here. My battery's about to be dead. So I'm going to call it a night. Thanks so much for watching. And we'll see you guys whatever the next video is. And don't forget to leave me a link below to uh, let me know what I can do with this. Thanks so much, guys, for watching. And God bless.